please. Thank you very much, Chair. And I'd also like to start by thanking Juliet and her colleagues at The Guardian for the really excellent work they're doing defending the rule of law and various other issues. I'm not feeling proud about everything about Britain at the moment, but uh, she and her colleagues are making me feel very proud. And I'd like to develop this theme of the link between Brexit and tax avoidance and the link between the so-called bad boys of Brexit in particular, as evidenced by the Paradise Papers. So we know that many of the proponents of Brexit were found in the Paradise Papers and that they have strong offshore connections. Aaron Banks, for example, I'm actually his MEP, that's a rare honour, favours tax havens including the Isle of Man, Gibraltar and the British Virgin Islands. Jacob Rees-Mogg, I'm also his MEP, um, his investment fund is managed by subsidiaries in the Cayman Islands and Singapore. Meanwhile, Lord Ashcroft achieved notoriety through exploiting the UK's non-DOM tax status, and he also featured prominently in the Paradise Papers. So I'd like to ask you, Julia, what's your assessment of the link between these bad boys of Brexit and the Paradise Papers? Do you think there is a link between their interests in, in making sure that the UK leaves the European Union and their interests in tax havens? And is this what they really mean by taking back control? Um, Molly, I also wanted to say thank you for the work that you've been doing. You've been a very effective voice in the UK uh, in terms of all these issues on money laundering and tax avoidance and evasion. Um, uh, yes, I think, I think there is actually a link. Um, we, these are the characters that keep cropping up when we're looking at the data and we're looking at UK personalities in the data. Um, so, uh, um, so we're talking about individuals who quite often um, have acted as treasurers for the Conservative Party. Uh, Lord Fink appeared in the Panama Papers. Um, Lord Megan, an ex-treasurer, uh, had a family trust, I think, in Jersey. Um, in the Paradise Papers. Um, you may mention Jacob Rees-Mogg. Uh, Aaron Banks is there to a certain extent because we had information from the Isle of Man where he has extensive operations. Um, his business partner, Jim Mellon, um, who's also a tax exile who actually lives in the Isle of Man, um, was, was present. Um, we had uh, the, the Barclay Brothers, who own the Telegraph newspaper, which has been one of the major newspapers cheerleading for Brexit, um, with structures uh, in, in the Paradise Papers as well. Um, I, think, I think that there is a link. Um, I'm, I'm concerned. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn has, has said it. Um, he's worried that there are elements pushing for uh, the UK to become some kind of tax haven on the shores of Europe once we exit. I think that um, once we leave Europe, Britain does become far more vulnerable uh, to capture, to even more capture by the finance sector than it is, but particularly these rather aggressive offshore uh, cheerleading elements uh, from the finance sector. And um, so I think it's very important to, before we leave, to put in measures um, that would protect us against this. And, and transparency is one of the big ones. Um, but um, uh, I think the, the, um, also the publication of those buying uh, residency in the UK, the publication of the names of those individuals might also be a, a useful protection. Um, but I, yeah, I think there is, there is a, a direct link. I think, I think they see, I think people like Lord Ashcroft uh, see Brexit as a fabulous opportunity for the industry in which they've made their money. Could I maybe ask a little bit more particularly about Aaron Banks because the way the money was raised for the Leave.eu campaign I think is a subject of particular concern and we know that he has interests in both the Isle of Man and Gibraltar. Could you say a little bit more about that maybe? Um, yes, so Aaron Banks um, uh, has via a holding company uh, has had for a long time an interest in uh, a Fiji Shrew business called STM FIDEX. Um, uh, now, that, the, the role of that business is to incorporate offshore companies and um, to act on behalf of uh, the owners of those companies to screen their identities. So these sort of fiduciary businesses are, are a route uh, for all sorts of money into Europe, and they're, they're, a, they're a means of hiding um, how, uh, where money has come from and where it's going. Um, so I think we need, we need greater scrutiny of these businesses um, we, need, we certainly need greater scrutiny of um, what may have been happening within STM FedEx. I mean, I think the reporting by um, the Observer 
uh, and um, in particular Carol Cadwallader on this issue um, has been very interesting in recent weeks. Um, we've seen now uh, documentary evidence of very close ties um, between Banks's campaign and uh, the Russian embassy. Um, and uh, it seems to me that there's a great reluctance within our parliament on both sides of the House, um, both in the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, to uh, investigate these issues, um, to uh, bring any further evidence to light uh, of any potential collusion. But I think this needs to happen. It's happening in America. Why isn't it happening in Britain? 